By now, very many of you have heard about the hieroglyphs appearing from eclipse paths over the USA in total solar eclipses in 2017 and 2024. And then again in the Mideast eclipses of 2027 and 2034. The USA eclipses create an apex over the area known as Little Egypt in southern Illinois, and the Mideast eclipses have an apex in southeastern Egypt. There are literally dozens of vloggers on YouTube talking about this now, but very few of them provide any context or reference points to determine whether such crosses are peculiar or not. That's what this video is intended to do, to show you various levels of peculiarity associated with the historic appearance of eclipse crosses. I've spent three years documenting the phenomena of solar eclipses and created a comprehensive website and 400-page book, both called Eclipse Witness. Now I'll give my short take on the level of peculiarity we're witnessing with these eclipses. All of these maps are my hand-drawn original works based on scientific eclipse maps. The USA eclipses occur exactly 2,422 days apart and both happen on Mondays. The Egypt eclipses are 2,422 days apart and also both happen on Mondays. 2,422 days is exactly seven eclipse years. They are all part of what is called a Hepton cycle, which is a cycle composed of seven eclipses 1,211 days apart. Is this peculiar or is it something that happens all the time? Well, there's on average one total eclipse every 18 months but the average is rarely the reality. Eclipses can, you can have two or even three total eclipses in a year, or you can go two and a half years without having any total eclipse. The path of totality covers about one four hundredth of the Earth's surface, and that is why the vast majority of humans live and die without ever seeing a total eclipse. We see a total eclipse the way we do because the sun and moon are the exact same apparent size in the sky. The sun is 400 times bigger than the moon and 400 times further away. To the, to the discerning mind, this is obvious proof of an arrangement by a creator God, an aesthetic proof revealed to modern man and dismissed as coincidence only by our scientific overlords. We need to ask ourselves if God would create such a precise alignment for no reason. Now, are solar eclipses themselves rare in the USA? There have been about 21 total eclipses that have touched somewhere within the boundaries of the 48 contiguous U.S. states since 1776. Many of those only touched a few states at a time. The 2024 eclipse will be the 22nd total eclipse in the U.S. since independence. It will also be only the fourth total eclipse to go cross-country over the U.S. The others were in 1806, 1918, and 2017. The 2024 eclipse will be the first to go cross-country south to north ever. It is also the first to connect Mexico, U.S., and Canada overland since any of those nations' founding. So yes, it is deeply peculiar that two cross-country eclipse, eclipses would occur so close together. Not only that, but they create a very balanced cross, or Tav. Is that peculiar? Well, let's look at all overland total eclipse crosses within the 48 states in the last 1,000 years. The last one was an 856-day cross completed in the year 1451. Now, in throughout the whole world, there have only been about 70 overland total eclipse crosses involving eclipses within 10 years of each other on the entire planet in the last 1,000 years. Once again, that's 70 eclipse crosses, total eclipse crosses in the last thousand years. About half of the crosses are unbalanced and they tend to look sort of like this. What I'd like to do is present all 35 balanced total crosses of the last 
1,000 years. 993, 1,000 A.D., Apex near Dubai. 1,000, 1,007 Apex in Arabia over Yemen. 1,097 and 1,104 A.D., Apex in Nevada. The incredibly interesting 1133 and 1140 Anarchy Cross in Britain. The 1133 A.D. eclipse occurred with the death of King Henry and the descent of Britain into the civil war known as the Anarchy. 1160 and 1167, the Genghis Khan Cross, Apex in Mongolia. Genghis Khan was born between these two eclipses, the great Mongol warlord. 1185-1187 in Denmark. 1206-1213 Mali in Africa. 1214 and 1221 Mongol invasion, China eclipse as the Mongols invaded China. 1221 and 1223 Mongol invasions China and Russia, as the Mongols began their invasions of Kievan Rus, the primary imperial force before Russia. 1239 and 1241, Serbia is in the apex. The Mongols invaded Serbia right in that same time and got as far west as um, Western Europe. 1275 and 1277, Kyushu, Kyushu, Japan, the Kamikaze Cross. This is when the Mongols were finally defeated by the Japanese and the idea of Kamikaze, or divine wind, first was established. So, in 117 years between 1160 and 1277, five of the seven eclipse crosses on Earth have distinct relations to the Mongols. Very interesting. Now we move on. 1290 and 1292, the Inca Cross in Peru. 1319, 1326, Mozambique. 1373, 1380, the Congo Cross. 1424, 1431, and 1433, Polish Cross, as the Polish Teutonic War raged. And the 1449 to 1451, the two crosses over what becomes the U.S., 1478 to 1485, a cross on the coast of Spain, which links Spain to the New World seven years before they send Christopher Columbus to the New World. 1514, 1521 in China, just as they open to Western traders um, for the first time. 1562, 1569, cross over Canada. 1598, 1600, and 1605, England and Britain, just as they were fighting the great English-British war for domination of the world, this total eclipse hieroglyph appears. Australia has one total cross in a thousand years, and that happens in the 1608 and 1610, just two years after the continent is discovered by Europeans. 1652 and 1654, Britain cross, uh, the Civil War cross, just as their Civil War raged with Oliver Cromwell's influence. 1670 and 1672, the Canada Hudson Bay eclipse, just two weeks after the Hudson Bay Company is incorporated with an apex at Great Slave Lake. 1691, 1694, Gold rush in Brazil. As gold is discovered in Brazil and African slaves are imported in mass. 1706, 1708, 1715. Peter the Great and Russian crosses during the time of Peter the Great. 1724 and 1734, the Khartoum Cross in Sudan. This is linked to the 2027 and 2034 Mideast Cross with eclipse cycles. 1745, 1749, 1752, Central American double crosses. The 1858 and 1865 slavery cross with an apex not that far from Rio de Janeiro, the last greatest 
hugest slave port in the history of the world. The 1865 eclipse occurs 10 days after the murder of Abraham Lincoln and 20 years before Brazil finally abolishes slavery. 1912, the Titanic eclipse, which occurs three days or two days after the sinking of the Titanic, intersects an eclipse August 21st, 1914 over Europe. This is the World War I cross. The Southeast Asia War Cross, May 9th, 1948, and June 20th, 1955. This cross goes over both Korea and Vietnam with an apex in Cambodia and Vietnam. This is part of the extraordinary Southeast Asia swarm from 1944 to 1965. 1952 and 1954, the Iran Shah Rud Tav. The Shah is installed in 1953 between these two eclipses in a coup, Western-backed coup. You can actually see that the 1954 eclipse actually links the U.S. and Iran, also le- links Ukraine and Kiev. The USSR Octon Trident in 1961 and 1968. This, the last eclipse in this one occurred one month after the invasion of Czechoslovakia. The Nova Scotia cro- Cross in 1970 and 1972. You might remember Carly Simons hit, you're so vain, uh, when they go up, flies up to Nova Scotia to see a total eclipse of the sun. That's the 1972 eclipse. Interestingly, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is born on Christmas Day, 1971, between these two eclipses in the city of Ottawa. Turkish Tov of 1999 and 2006, as the EU assumed control over the sovereignty of Europe and eliminated national sovereignty essentially for the first time in 1,200 years. Then, of course, we have the USA crosses in 2017 and 2024, which create the Hepton Tav with Apex in Little Egypt. And then the Mideast crosses in 2027 and 2034 with Apex in Egypt. The USA and Mideast Monday eclipses occur in sets. They are separated by 10 years minus 19 days, 3,633 days. That figure is nine solar years plus one eclipse year, which is interesting. That also equals 81 lunar months. These are very interesting cycles that create incredible combinations. You can see more at Eclipse Witness. In other words, we have a balanced set of eclipses, total eclipses, crosses, distanced by a balanced time frame. Now, in those 1,000 years of crosses, world crosses, that we just looked at, there is no set of balanced total crosses distant by such a time frame, each occurring on the same day of the week. We are dealing with something completely unique here. Now, add to this that there is yet another total cross occurring on Mondays over Australia in 2030 and 2037. And the configuration that appears before us becomes so completely unique as to defy description, completely without precedent. Three total crosses equally balanced across the face of the earth, over land. In the meantime, there is a swarm of two totals and a ring of fire that makes this interesting configuration over Spain between 2026 and 2028. The USA crosses, when combined with the 20 the USA cross, I should say, when combined with the 2023 ring of fire, create this aleph over the United States of America. This kind of aleph has never appeared over the face of the planet in the last thousand years. It is incredibly well put together. It's very balanced. Australia, which as we had seen, had only one total cross in a thousand years, then sees this double apex. And when combined with Ring of Fires, has a swarm of unprecedented magnitude over the course of 19 years. 
In retrospect, let's look at this whole matter. The first empire of man was Egypt. The great middle empire was Rome, who saw its spiritual child in Spain. And the last empire was the American empire. And of course, the very last continent discovered was Australia, which was also home to probably the very first people group known on planet Earth, the Aborigines. We have some very interesting first will be last, last will be first combinations, which there's no sense going over too deeply here. In, in uh, climactic reality, we have a kind of balanced series of hieroglyphs formed by total eclipse paths as has not occurred in a thousand years, if they have ever occurred at all. I don't claim to fully understand this completely, but it's clearly the work of God. And it does appear climactic, as if the human experience were being summed up. Just as we confront our digital demise and approach the 2000th anniversary of the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, there's lots of people talking about eclipses, but there's only one place that lets the eclipses speak for themselves. And that's why you should head over and check it out for yourself. I don't, I don't have ads. I don't try to sell you anything. I just tell you about the eclipses over at eclipsewitness.com. May God bless you. Have a great day.